All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another Fear of the Walking Dead video for today, leading up to the premiere for Fear of the Walking Dead next Sunday. In this one, we're going to give our thoughts and go over some early reviews that are now in. All right, and I'll put the link in the description so you guys can go ahead and uh, check this out for yourself. Comicbook.com has the details from uh, last week. Uh, basically, just, you know, all the Game of Thrones videos we've been making. We did one for uh, Fear of the Walking Dead uh, preview pictures. So if you guys haven't seen that one yet, we released that on Friday night. Uh, I'll put the link in for it in uh, the description as well as uh, in the end screen videos for you guys here so you can watch it after you're done watching this one if you haven't seen all the preview pictures for season five of fear and you want to uh, most of the reviews that i've seen online comicbook.com other websites uh, it looks like fear the walking dead season five actually is getting pretty good pretty good reviews so far so let's go over what it says here so it says fear the walking dead has become a difficult title to recommend thanks in large part to its inconsistency. After a stellar third season, made it one of the best shows in television at the time, and certainly the best Walking Dead show at the time, its fourth season went ahead and revamped it entirely. The revamp started off with tremendous promise, adding Lenny James as Morgan Jones from The Walking Dead, and Garrett Dillahunt and Jenna Elfman as newcomers who uh, immediately delivered a fan favorite episode. So we're talking about the beginning of season four. Then the show began to stumble toward the finish uh, of its fourth season as the bait of a bigger crossover with The Walking Dead took over its narrative. Uh, season 5 seems to be doing the opposite of the season which preceded it, uh, starting off without a concise direction but quickly getting more uh, interesting as Ruben Blades returns as Daniel Salazar and Austin Emilio carries out the second crossover. Uh, by the way, before we go forward, I should say, spoiler warning if anyone doesn't want to know any details of this uh, season, uh, they're going to give some details here so uh in the uh, the review i don't know how spoilery it will be it's not my review i haven't seen it yet just to let you guys know i'm gonna watch it with you guys but um just adds up anyone's you know uh worried about spoilers and doesn't want to know any details early on the beginning of fear the walking dead's fifth season has the problem of not having a clear antagonist uh the heroes of the show are aimlessly and apparently hopelessly trying to help people quote unquote help people uh this leads uh, to a bunch of morgan jones's being endlessly optimistic, something that didn't really work on The Walking Dead before Fear. But Lenny James is so brilliant in the delivery of every line and expression that it almost works. Uh, if there were a clear-cut villain working against the survivors, the story would have a more natural and interesting propulsion early on. Um, let's kind of pause there for a sec. So, you know, I mean, they can't always have a villain at the forefront all the time. Sometimes the villain is kind of the world. And there's even seasons like season five of the original Walking Dead series where they're on the road for a lot of that season. Uh, you have Dawn and you have, like, there's some villains here and there. But uh, a lot of it is just them kind of being on the road in the world and sort of the zombies are kind of the villains or whatever they kind of run into, right? Um, so, yeah, you know, I don't know necessarily if that's a bad thing and you can't always, every single season, every episode have vultures or certain villains there, right? Furthermore, the show suffers from the teases of connections to The Walking Dead. Uh, there was a time when The Walking Dead was big enough to understand the necessity of connections and such teases could have helped Fear the Walking Dead find its footing. At this point, it has become redundant and unnecessary, taking away from Fear's independence as it already uh, has uh, an ensemble of characters and actors who are interesting and talented enough to carry the show themselves. It's time for Fear the Walking Dead to either wholly commit to the Walking Dead and meaningful connections to Scott Kimple's expanding dead universe or drop the teases altogether. Then come uh, episodes three and four, possibly to the rescue. So it sounds like uh, they've seen the first four, and three and four maybe a new villain or something, or maybe getting better as the season goes. Uh, fortunately, the uh, for Fear of the Walking Dead, James, Alicia, Deadman, and Carrie, Austin, Amelia, and Ruben Blades are oozing with enough talent to offer the lackluster early narrative some compelling screen time. More specifically, James and Dead Name Carey uh, play opposite one another delightfully, though the latter has certainly 
earn the right to more dialogue by now. James's nuanced uh, veteran skill commands the screen while his character's uh, ideologies clash with those of Dead Man Carey's uh, Alicia Clark, a character who has lost everything and managed to emerge uh, with traits uh, compatible or capable of making her a leader. So let's go there. So when you read off the names here, you, you, you think, okay, you've got Alicia, you've got uh, Morgan, you've got Dwight, you've got Dan returning, and everybody else too. Um, pretty good roster, right? Not that bad. Like, not that bad of roster considering they got Dwight, they have Morgan now, they still have Alicia, they still have Stram, they still have a lot of the others, and now you're bringing Daniel back too. Not a bad roster. You know, the original Walking Dead series almost sometimes feels more empty than that, if you think of it, in terms of the older characters. Uh, then it says, For the sake of keeping things spoiler-free, Emilio's debut and Blade's return also make for some of the most uh, more interesting uh, beats of Fear's early episodes. Emilio comes with one out of this world uh, action concept paired with Garrett Dillahunt's uh, John Dory, and their characters couldn't be more perfectly suited to be on the screen together. While Blades is paired with a cat named, now this is kind of spoilers, but we'll, we'll go into it anyway, Skidmark, who will certainly prompt, if Skidmark dies, we riot threads on social media, the cat, so they have a cat now. The cat is hugely entertaining and quite a talented actor. Is this? Are you guys serious? Is this for real? I, again, I don't know anything about this, so I'm just reading what what they have list. I, you know, okay, it's cool. Uh, in the first episode, Fear the Walking Dead does offer up uh, one of its more or most interesting set pieces since the dam went down in season three finale, launching at the site of an intense plane crash. Uh, the ensemble cast is almost together in its entirety as the post-apocalyptic world is once again reinvented as a treacherous threat. Um, these seasoned survivors uh, make anything they can into weapons, including a propeller for Alicia Clark, uh, showing uh, their strength and capabilities before they are unfortunately uh, scattered across different locations again. In fact, a second action sequence, uh, once again involving a plane in later episodes, offers up another early season five highlight. Well, I, I don't, first, I don't want to see too much of this stuff, you know, spoiled for us, but I, I don't think they've given too much away so far. We kind of know there's going to be a plane from the uh, poster, so it's not like it, it's not like they're going to stuff that we have no idea about, right? Uh, the cat thing is new, though. I didn't know about that <laughs> until this. So separating its characters is something Fear the Walking Dead has long insisted on doing, despite its best content coming from episodes where where they are together. Fortunately, the separation is actually purposeful this time, as one character all too ironically points out, but this must be a very small world for them to keep coming back together. Uh, don't they have walkie-talkies? Isn't that how they're finding each other? Uh, they have certain locations too, right, that they know of. Um, the series gains a lot of momentum as it carries on, which will leave viewers on an optimistic note uh, for what's to come throughout the new season. The narrative threads uh, which it stumbled to introduce early on certainly have potential for rewarding payoff down the road. Looking back at its uh, preceding season, though, it's safer to go into the rest of the season more cautiously. If James, Deadman Carey, and Blades are given their time to shine within an independent story, the season is destined for a brighter fate. So they've only seen the first four uh, episodes. Um, that sounds good to me. You know, that, that, that sounds pretty damn good. You know, at this point in time, I'm kind of like, you know, after all the series and everything that's going on this last year, I'm kind of just looking forward to seeing, um, you know, a, a pretty good size roster for Fear. Um, you know, maybe not that many character deaths early on because I don't think it's not, for me personally, it's not necessary right now, <laughs> you know. So, uh, especially after The Walking Dead season eight and, or, or sorry, nine, yeah, nine and how that ended and everything else that's been going on lately. Um, you know, all the, all the deaths with the pikes and everything, whispers and that. So that was crazy. So, so I feel like right now, you know, it, it's probably a good thing. It's probably not necessary to come out like, you know, with anything crazy like that at this time for fear. I think it'll just be cool to see them kind of finding their, their identity together as a group. However, Dwight somehow fits in there. Uh, Daniel returning will be kind of cool too. And, um, you know, maybe I'm in the mood for kind of a lighter fear, which is which is what they do a lot of times. They work in a little bit of comedy. Uh, they have it be a little bit silly sometimes and kind of fun at the same time. 
and uh, there's a little bit intense, but you know, not not too intense. So I'm kind of, you know, I mean, that sounds good to me. I'm kind of in the mood for that. So looking forward to it. Sounds pretty good. We do have some questions from you guys from the uh, preview video that you left. And if you have any other further uh, questions for this week, you want to do a Q&A for Fee or another one, then uh, leave me any questions you have below and we can get into them. Uh, Daniel Kelly says, I think Morgan will reunite with Rick at the helicopter community. Um, well, we'll see. There, there are some fan theories right now where they think maybe we'll see Rick in Fear. You know, I, I tend to think the movie idea is is uh, is what we'll see, and I don't think I don't think we'll ever see Rick in Fear. Um, I just I, I don't see that. But you know, some other people think we will. So who knows? Uh, maybe they're right. Uh, but I just uh, I think it's it's the movie thing, and that we'll probably never see him in Fear. Uh, it, it would be cool to see him and Morgan reunited again one time, but I don't know if, if we'll ever see that either, unfortunately. Uh, maybe in the movies. Um, Nathan OK says, Hey, Trev, uh, can you make a video about what happened to Alicia's butterfly knife? Uh, I remember it being in the early promos for season four, but it was never actually uh, included. So that's true that ever since they've done kind of the uh, Morgan crossover, they've given everybody sort of their own weapons. Uh, I wonder what it'll be for Dwight, maybe an axe or something uh, from the previews. He's kind of got like a pickaxe or a hatchet or something. That's kind of cool. Um, well, we'll see. She's got that end of that gun or turret or whatever she has, right, which is uh, she's been using as kind of her signature weapon lately, which is kind of cool. Uh, any character, I feel like any characters that have signature weapons weapons are probably more likely to survive long term <laughs> because you know it's like uh, they got to have their own thing so you know when they do that it's like they're they're they kind of cross over into a superhero type of territory which i think she has and morgan of course has uh, a while ago right uh, especially being trained by ninja turtle and everything uh toby tv official says uh, i'm only going to give the season a try for three reasons morgan dwight and because i am a true fan of the walking dead so um for Toby, yeah, man, why not, dude? And what else is on right now this time of the year? You know, it's June. There's nothing else on. And uh, why not? Why not give it a shot and see what they have for us? I mean, it can't be more disappointing than <laughs> than, season, than, than some of the other stuff I've been, I've been into recently. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have too with the channel we've been talking about. Uh, Renee H. says, looking forward to it. Thanks, Trev. They better not kill Alicia. Agreed. Yes, agreed. Better not do it. Uh, if they do that, then 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 I don't know. We're gonna have some problems, right? But I don't think they will. I think they they know they really can't do that. And every so often they do one of these things they're like they can't do, and they just do it anyway. And it's like it just don't do it. It's stupid. <laughs> I mean, like you get the shock value for like one episode, but it's not worth it. The payoff is not worth it at all. Uh, Batman Shadow of uh, the Hedgehog says, uh, "Yeah, I can't wait for Fear of the Walking Dead season five. I'm a fan uh, of the Walking Dead and Fear of the Walking Dead, so that's great." And a uh, last one will be from Two Fierce Clan, who says, "I can't wait for the Dead reviews and discussions. Keep them coming. Great content, Trev. I'm gonna watch the first few episodes of Fear. I'm hearing lots of great things about the first few episodes. So, yeah, yeah, it sounds good, man. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I think it's uh, you know now's a good time for that, right? Now's a really good time for that. So if you like this video today, guys." thumb it up and leave me another comment about what you want to talk about for fear and um, any questions you have let me know how you're feeling about it what you think about going into this uh, this season and uh, whether or not you're hyped for it or you're just kind of feeling like ah whatever anyway that's it for this video I'll see you guys again soon for another as always this is Trev and I'm saying peace later guys see you soon